So 15,744 points. So uh, if you have a high-end Z690 or this brand new Z790 based system with two slot motherboard etc. You definitely need to get your hands on some of this uh, brand new ADI based TDR5 memory from SK Hynix. So look at these numbers. Yes, this is with a voltage that's too high for daily use, but still, DDR5, 8600 with 34, 48, 48, 42 command rate, 2, all on air cooling. So both the CPU and memory on ambient based cooling, and the memory doesn't even have any heating at all. So pretty interesting, if you ask me. So the memory voltage should be somewhere around like 1.65 to 1.7 volts, so it's definitely uh, it is too high for daily use, I know, but uh, I just wanted to see like what could be reached on uh, this particular kit. So here's the memory voltage itself, so what VDD 1.665, VVV 1.8, that's the default value, etc. But uh, still, considering that these are the very basic, like bulk, no-name, green PCB uh, memory sticks from Hynix, and these outperform many of the very high-end and highly binned custom kits from more notable vendors. I think it looks quite interesting. It makes many of those very highly binned and expensive kits from more notable vendors look kind of boring or bad if you ask me. So these are definitely high numbers. So 8600, maybe there's even more. We'll see. Now finally, I managed to break 16,000 points in Geekbench 3 uh, memory pod in multi-core. So I broke it once before, but with limited memory inside the operating system. So uh, this was with uh, the full memory capacity being used. And this was actually at pretty high uh, memory frequency. So uh, that's like uh, DDR5 8650 plus. So that's tremendous frequency considering that we are still using just ambient cooling on the CPU and on the memory so uh, yeah so definitely my best ever cream PCB like bulk memory sticks I never had this good performance with random sticks like this before I did raise the memory voltage a little bit so it's uh, a bit over 1.7 volts now I think 1.71 and I want to uh, try to run ADA64, the first line for you guys before I wrap this whole video up. Like, <clears throat> what kind of numbers we could have. Most of the sub timings were set manually, so we have 34, 48, 48, 38, 86, 16. TRFC can definitely go tighter. I did run it as tight as like 520, like around 500 at this uh, frequency and timing table, and the third timings are manually set as well. So, very awesome thing. So now I'll just save it and I'll try to run ADA64 and see what kind of bandwidth numbers we can see at this high memory frequency, etc. Now passing ADA64 memory test was actually a lot more difficult compared to Geekbench 3. I failed this many, many times and I couldn't pass it at the highest frequency of 8650. It usually failed in the copy part of the test, so it just gave like zero megabytes per second uh, result, or it just gave a blue screen of death. But I finally managed to pass it at DDR5 8600 with pretty much the same timing table as before. And the bandwidth numbers are definitely interesting. So 140.45 gigabytes per second for the read, 135.5 for the write, and 134.29 for the copy and latency 47.8 nanoseconds. I could actually pass this kind of frequency even with much lower memory voltage. So instead of 1.7, like I could do up to like 8500 or even 8600 with just 1.448, sorry, so 1.48 volts on the memory, but with much more loose timing table. So like CAS latency of 38 and TRCD and TRP at 50. The bandwidth numbers were roughly the same or very close to this, what I got now, but the latency result was obviously much slower, like 50.5 nanoseconds or 51 nanoseconds. So uh, yeah, just uh, I, I really wanted to see this uh, result out of curiosity. 
after I passed the Geekbench 3 at so high frequency. But yeah, so you should definitely consider buying some of this brand new ADI memory from Hynix. Uh, at the time of making this video, I still think that the only place where you can actually buy some of this brand new ADI DDR5 memory from Hynix is Tabao in China. I'm absolutely sure that the more notable vendors in the computer memory market scene like G-Skill, Team Group, Corsair, they are certainly aware of this brand new memory IC type from Hynix. So I'm absolutely sure we will see like more notable vendors starting to bring these ADI based memories to the market. Like I already saw some advertisement from G-Skill that they are bringing out to the market like Trident Z5 uh, 7800 megahertz kit. So that's, uh, I would assume it's based on this brand new uh, ADI IC from Hynix, but it could still be MDI. So MDI is the older version of the Hynix DDR5 IC. Even the older uh, MDI can actually go much higher on memory frequency on this new platform. The biggest difference is on Z690. So if you want to reach these high frequencies on Z690, the only way to go is to get ADI. But on Z790, you can actually go very high on the memory frequency, even with the older MDI IC. I don't know what's the uh, outcome on the newest generation from AMD, but I would assume that on the AMD Ryzen like 7950X, the frequencies are limited to much lower frequencies like 6000, but I'm not sure because I haven't tested that platform myself. When it comes to pricing, the cheapest option, what I could find on Tabao was less than 200 euros, but it's still quite risky if you ask me. So if you go for the cheaper option, there's a real risk that you won't even receive ADI. It's very possible that you receive the older MDI from Hynix. And the other thing that you have to take into account is the PMIC. So uh, I don't remember like uh, out of my mind, which of the PMIC versions can go above the official voltage limit of 1.435 volts on these high-end motherboards with two memory slots. Not all of them can do it, but this kit, what I have over here, can obviously go beyond that limit of 1.435. The highest voltage I tried was up to 1.8 volts. So uh, uh, this kit did cost like a bit over 300 euros on Tabao before the shipping cost and the value added tax on top if you live in Europe. So the total cost I had to pay for this kit was like around 400 euros. So it's definitely not cheap for a green PCB, no name, like completely random TDR5 kit. But after seeing these performance figures like this frequency, these timings, etc., I'm pretty happy about this kit if you ask me. So uh, you can obviously go for the cheaper option if you want to take the risk, but again, please be aware what you can actually receive. So it might be the older MDI or you are just limited to just 1.435 volts only. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's see what happens in the coming months. I'm sure we will see even better M uh, ADI kits from other vendors as well. But I honestly think that we are just hitting the IMC limit already with these. So uh, I'm sure we will not see like DDR5 9000 on uh, just air-cooled CPU, but we'll see what happens. So let me know what you think about this brand new memory IC type from Hynix in the comments section down below, like, and tell me what do you think about this particular video and about my testing. And yeah, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work. And yeah, thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.